We produced a bundle of pens, a copious supply of ink, and a goodly show of writing and blotting paper, for there was something very comfortable in having plenty of stationery. Hello, it's Ruby, and today I've got another back to school video to share with you. This is my back to school supplies haul for 2021. <music> Today's video does have a little bit of a twist though because I have gone for antique vintage stationery this year. In the 21st century a lot of things are kind of made to be replaced so you might buy a pair of scissors but the manufacturers are intending that in like 5-10 years you're going to be buying another pair but in the Victorian and Edwardian period the focus was on durability and creating items which were going to last a long long time which is testament today because like these items are like 100 plus years old and they are still working very well. The first thing is not particularly stationary related but I want to show you because it's kind of school related and I am so excited that I managed to find this. So, my parents and I went to an antique shop and I found this. Since I was a little kid, I have wanted a trunk like this. And I didn't realise this, but there are lots of different types of trunks. You've got Jenny Lind trunks, you've got steamer trunks, and looking online, it looks like this probably was a boarding school trunk. And on the side, you can actually see it's got somebody's initials, which is so, so cool. This is really, really heavy. It's empty at the moment. I've emptied it. And so when it's full, I have no idea how anyone is able to carry it around, especially because it doesn't have wheels on the bottom. I wanted to show you this because it is honestly so cool and I can't quite believe it's in my bedroom. It's also just the most beautiful trunk I ever could have thought of. It's got like these bands at the back for storing things and buckles to tie things in. But yes, anyway, let's move on to the actual stationery. In the 1980s, Postman, who is a sociologist, noted that the Victorian era was an age of writing and reading. It was a written culture, as opposed to our modern visual culture. The written word was so important, and we actually see this in Our Mutual Friend by Charles Dickens. Dickens refers to the man's sense of the binding powers of pen and ink and paper. In the 18th century, we saw the growth of the man of the letters and letter writing in general. And with the beginnings of commodity culture in the Victorian period, this led to lots Lots of stationery being produced for the first time. So the first piece of proper stationery I have to show you is this. This is an Edwardian ink blotter and you basically use this straight after writing with ink so that it doesn't smudge and to go along with that I bought some blotting paper. I've really wanted to try an ink blotter for a long time and so I'm really excited that I got this. I write lots of letters and I tend to use dipping pen and ink or fountain pen and sometimes it does smudge so I actually think this is going to end up being useful. Interestingly in Charles Dickens again we see blotting paper referred to quite a lot like alongside ink and pens as being one of the most important things when writing. For example, in Our Mutual Friend, one of the characters is instructed to bring a pen and ink with them and a bit of blotting paper. We see this trend in a lot of Dickens books. If you read Dickens, you'll notice that he'll reference pens, inks, and blotting paper, usually as like the three most important aspects of writing. Okay, next, I needed some new scissors actually because I managed to completely lose mine and I ordered these Victorian scissors. They are quite a lot smaller than I expected them to be. The next thing I have got to share with you is in this little tin. So I bought some new nibs for my dipping pen. This here is my dipping pen. It is a really lovely wooden one that I got from Bortoletti. So there are 10 nibs here and these are antique nibs. I have never tried writing with an antique nib before but I'm really excited to try that now with you. And I really love how there is a variety of nibs here as well. I really like this flat top one in particular. I'm really looking forward to using this. So with dipping pens, all you've got to do is slot out the existing one that you've got in the pen and then you just put your new nib in. Tying into what I was saying about Victorian durability and sustainability, you buy one pen and then if the nib breaks you replace it rather than the whole pen, which is a much better system. In this clip you can just see me trying the nib for the first time and it's so cool to think that this is an actual Victorian nib. Also to go along with that I bought this beautiful nib tin. Since different nibs will produce different kinds of writing, different kinds of calligraphy, it was common to have a nib tin where you stored all of your nibs. <laughs> 
this one's really nice, it's JB Mallet. I don't think this is Victorian or Edwardian, I'm pretty sure it's like 1930s or 40s. Okay, so the next thing I have got is some writing paper. I got this one from Rodia. This isn't vintage, of course. I really just trust Rodia's paper, really, really high quality, and it's also good for ink pens, it won't bleed through. So I'm gonna be using this for letter writing. Okay, so the next thing I've got is this parcel here. Um, I placed an order from Cold Pens. Ooh, I've literally been so excited about this. First thing here is a few pens. Oh, there's so much bubble wrap though. The first thing I've got is a new green mild liner. The green mild liner is my favorite and I have used mine up. Mild liners are my absolute favorite highlighters. They come in lovely muted colors and they have a highlighter tip on one side and a felt tip on the other. The next thing I got is another of the 0.5 Zebra Sarasa pens. These are my favorite non-fountain pens to write with. I really would recommend them. They write very smoothly. And again, I'd used mine up, so I got a new one. And then these two are very exciting. I got two reusable ink cartridges. So you can fill these up yourself. It's obviously better than using the plastic ones, which you just throw away. This one is for my Lamy pen, and this one is for my fountain pen. It just works on a capillary based system. So you twist it and then the ink comes up. Initially, fountain pens were designed with a gravity design, but the capillary design has basically been used since the 1880s when fountain pens started to be mass produced. Now for the second bit, oh my gosh, I think this is what I'm more excited about. Oh, look at that, they've included some love hearts. Should I have one now? Sorry for the outfit change, but in the second package, I've got some ink. I ordered five inks from Diamine. These are all colors that I don't have, and I'm so excited to start using them. So the first one is Writer's Blood, which is a deep maroon. This is very nearly black. It's like a red black, and it's such a striking color. The one I'm probably most excited about, though, is Saddle Brown. I really have been loving the color brown recently, and it adds a lovely vintage feel to your letters or notes when you're writing them. It's just a pleasant colour to write with. Next I've got Monbodo's hat which is a deep purple colour. I've really been wanting to get a purple ink for a while so I am looking forward to using this. And lastly I've got this one, it's a Northern Lights one and I love that this isn't just a blue or a green. It kind of changes like the Northern Lights. It's um, a really unique colour and a great one for writing with and I'm going to be using these in my ink pens. So filling up my ink cartridges with these and then using these for taking notes. I think it's really fun to have nice colors of ink as opposed to always using black. I also got a new ribbon for my typewriter since the old one had dried up and I wanted to start using my typewriter again. So these last two things are not very vintage -y at all, but I'm still going to share them with you because they are school supplies that I have picked up for the new academic year. And both of them are to do with my iPad. So this is my iPad. It's the 2018 standard iPad. It's basically the cheapest iPad model you can get, which is compatible with the Apple Pencil, which was the important thing for me when, pur when purchasing. And if you're looking for an iPad as a student, this is so much cheaper than the iPad Pro, and it does everything I would want an iPad to do as a student. I have the Apple Pencil, and the first thing I've got is is a silicon cover for my Apple Pencil. I never thought one of these would be necessary and I wouldn't say it is like an essential, it's not something you need. It does make it easier to grip when writing and the main reason that I got it is for the silicon cap on top because it means that when I put this in my pencil case, it won't get scratched, which is something I always worried about. So now I can just throw it in my pencil case and it won't matter. And then the second thing is very exciting. I wanted to get this for a while. I didn't have a screen protector on my iPad and I really wanted to try the paper-like one. So I'm going to unbox this now. So this screen protector basically makes it feel like you're writing on paper, supposedly on your iPad. And I use my iPad and it's functional, but I do much prefer writing on paper, of course. I just like the feel of it. And so I've been really intrigued by this and I'm hoping it will encourage me to use my iPad more for writing. Okay, so it's in this envelope. I've got to, we meant to watch a video for setting it up. That's probably a really good call because I did not set it up properly otherwise. 
Okay, it's the next morning and it's quite early, so I'm sorry, I look really tired. I've put the screen protector on the iPad, the paper light, and I've got to say I am in two minds about it. I'm actually considering taking it off. So it does write very nicely, and if you listen, it does sound like more like writing on paper. And it is genuinely easier to write with. I think because of the resistance, I don't really like writing on the glass of the iPad, but this is actually just pleasant to write on. However, it drastically reduces the screen quality on the iPad. When I was looking at reviews, no one said that, but it actually has this like weird gauze film on top. And so when you watch a video, for example, it's significantly lower, like it makes it really grainy. Just when you're on the home screen, it looks less clear, like the quality is visibly worse. The screen protector is also quite expensive, it's 35 pounds. And so I wouldn't necessarily recommend this iPad screen protector unless you are intending to use your iPad exclusively for writing and drawing, which I don't. I'm gonna leave it on at least for a couple of months because obviously I've paid for it, um, but I am quite disappointed with this, I've got to say. But I'm looking forward to trying it out and I will give you an update in like a month or so as to how I'm finding it and whether I recommend it. And with that said, I'm going to round off this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope that you have a productive week. I know the quality isn't great, but I wanted to end this video by giving you a short history of the fountain pen. I just thought it'd be a fun thing to add on to the end of this video. I am just filming on my phone though because I was just doing some research into this this morning and I found it really interesting and I thought you might want to learn about it too. The first time that the idea for a fountain pen was vaguely first written about was in 1636 by the German inventor Daniel Schwenter. He basically described this pen made from two quills where one of the quills acts as a reservoir of ink, so like an ink cartridge. He described this idea but the pen was never made. Similarly, in Samuel Pepys's diary, he referenced this pen that could carry ink. There is no evidence that this pen actually existed, but in one of his entries he writes, This evening came a letter about business from Mr Coventry, and with it, a silver pen he promised me to carry ink in, which is very necessary. Which basically seems like a fountain pen, right? Like a pen which would carry ink. Um, but there's no evidence to suggest that this actually was ever made. So people were very much talking about the idea of a fountain pen like it was something that people were looking for because like using ink and pen like using a dipping pen and ink can be quite high so I mean there's a lot of going back and forth and so it makes sense that people were thinking about fountain pens and like a cartridge based pen as an idea. The first English patent for a fountain pen wasn't until 1809 and that was by Frederick Folch but that was just a patent. The first pen to see commercial success was in 1819 which was John Scheffler's patent. This was one of the first working fountain pens and he called it a penographic. On his patent, he writes, the writer is enabled to use it for 10 or 12 hours with the same ease as with a pencil. Wow, how incredible. Um, fountain pens are actually pretty amazing when you think about it. And um, I love writing with fountain pen. I don't know if you found that interesting. It was just a little insight, but I thought I'd put it in this video because it is kind of relevant. Um, anyway, yeah, thank you for watching this video and I hope that you have a productive week.